a first look and run through of features for the newly released Mevo Multicam today on My Favorite Things. At our home field, the field is sunken on this end of the ballpark. Looks like probably about four, four and a half feet below where I'm standing. So when I mount my Mevo, I'm already at a good height that shows a great uh, looking down shot at the batter's box umpire pitcher's mound. Now that we have multicam released in the app store, we have the ability to mount more than one camera at the ballpark. Now you can see I am behind the ballpark. That's not a square shot behind the ballpark, behind the uh, batter's box. This would be. And so I'm just a little bit uh, to the right in my mounting of the camera. There's the pole to the left. I could mount on either side, but I like to have the first base view uh, as my second camera. So from this camera to this camera is probably about 60 feet I guess I don't know if you can still see that one over there but I am just underneath this camera and that's going to give me this shot of first base this side of the field it's not a shot with the Mevo start that will catch everything from home plate to first base across the infield this close because of the field of view being a little bit narrower than the Mevo Plus. But it does give a shot of everything happening on this side of the field depending on how I rotate that camera head. And what I found last night in a live game situation where I was using the Mevo Multicam 1.0 app was I had the ability to finally zoom into first base and second base so that I could catch all of the action coming this way and then use my behind the umpire shot for everything else that happened in the game, including I used that shot for the pitcher-catcher exchange and ran things on that side of the field most of the time, just bringing it to this side of the field whenever there was action on this side of the field. So let's look at what it takes to get the Mevo Multicam up and running. We'll start by turning on your Mevo cameras. Make sure your streaming device, whether that be your phone or your tablet, is connected to the network you desire to use. Once the Multicam app has been downloaded, open it up and let it find your cameras. If the blue button here says Setup, choose this and connect to the desired network. The button should now say Connect and you can choose this the Done button or the Start Streaming button at the top will get you to the same place. It's the next screen where you can see all of your choices. And we'll walk through the important ones here. Notice the main display at the top of the device is what is going live. The smaller ones below are available to go live. We'll deal with these ellipses on each camera in a moment. But first, let's talk about the choices at the bottom of the screen. The blue plus brings up a screen that allows us to either add a camera, up to three currently, or a graphic. Choosing camera takes you back to a screen we're already familiar with. But while we're here, let's add my Mevo Plus. The two times I've used it so far and needed to select a network for it, it's given me this message. The solution is to go into the 2.0 app and Put it on the network you need and then go back into Multicam app. Now you can see the plus is ready to connect. Choosing graphic from this screen allows us to make or choose a graphic from our device. The ones you make include over the shoulders that can now be in all four corners, bugs with the same option, and lower thirds just like the others. Also, full screen graphics. If you want to see how to make this ball not have a squared off background in this spot, check out this video. Now these pre-made graphics are stored in the pick icon at the bottom of the screen. The folder icon was chosen for the cameras for some reason. I don't get it, but it is what it is. 
this squiggly icon is used for sound. You have the option to mute or activate any of your cameras. For version 1.0, you can't choose any sound options inside the camera itself. You still have to go to the Mevo 2.0 app to change from the internal mic to other attached mics or the Mevo mic app itself. Don't worry, they're rapidly adding these features in the near future. You can also see the volume sliders which have a decibel value as you slide them. What we see in the ellipsis at the bottom right of this screen is going to give us other settings. Transition type is going to allow us to choose how the transitions from one camera to another happen. Cut, crossfade, and the duration, of course, is selectable. Camera assistant is the place where we find auto director. Auto director allows us to have the software choose the shot for us. It's going to rotate between the cameras, and I can choose one or two of them to be more often chosen if I so choose. The crop settings are going to be the boundaries, the, the maximums, and the other pieces that allow us to choose the crop settings here. The camera input quality, you get to choose according to what you like there. The video source latency can be a low, a standard, or a high. If I'm streaming a baseball game, I'm going to use, usually going to choose a high latency just in case my service is suspect. We see the about and the support options as well. Now getting back into the cameras themselves and looking at the ellipsis there, we're going to have a whole nother set of menus that we get to choose from here. You can see the drop down menu gives us information that includes our input bit rate and the free space we have on the streaming device. As we look at the ellipsis in this camera, we see image adjustments. That's gonna be just like in the Mevo 2.0 app where we have some presets and we have all of these uh, tweaking, uh, the ability to tweak in each of these uh, pop-up menus. High dynamic range here at the beginning, which controls how it handles light and image quality. But then as we swipe over and look uh, at the rest of these choices, you can see they're the same as the ones in the Mevo 2.0 app. I've done a video of, of each of these in specific fashion. So if you'd like to check that video out, uh, that one goes into great t detail that I will not go into in, uh, in this video in particular. In the Mevo Plus image adjustments, remember there is a view angle option to choose flat, narrow, wide, fisheye. It is unique from the Mevo Start. The Mevo settings that we have here, again, just like in the Mevo 2.0 app where you can change the name of your camera, format your SD card, choose a password, all of the things that would be in the 2.0 app are included here as well. The crop and zoom is one thing that Mevo is still trying to perfect in the multicam app. It is a little bit wonky, a little bit clunky in this iteration because you choose crop and zoom and then you go into a different view that's even flipped 90 degrees to be able to crop and view and then that view persists. You don't have the ability to see your crops, your presets on the screen while you're streaming unless you go into this menu. And I know that's probably going to change in the near future, but this is definitely less than uh, what, what they already have. Being able to choose our graphics that overlay our video we just go back into the pick icon at the bottom of the screen and choose one that we've already made. You can combine them. You see that two of the graphics uh, can be highlighted at the same time. So I have a full screen and I can even put it over the shoulder with that full screen if I were to so choose. And then to unselect and just go back to your camera shot, you just make sure there is no red outline. You just tap it again to unselect that particular view.
even though there are some obvious improvements still to be made, it's exciting to know that Multicam has finally come out of beta. And after using it last night for a, a full stream two plus hour baseball game, I'd say they're ready for prime time. If this video has been helpful for you, please remember to like it. If the things that I've produced in this channel have been helpful, helpful for you, also please subscribe.